Hello, God Squad and Young D's. I hope you had an amazing week this week. I know we're getting into like the nitty gritty of school, but remember that we have holidays coming up so you'll have some holiday breaks. I'm glad that y'all are joining us this Sunday again and I have amazing news. Guess what? What? Well, I'm sad because my Cowboys lost, but you know, that's, I hope they win next week, but that's not important. Guess what, for real? What? Okay, so we're starting a new series, y'all. It's exciting. I'm excited for sure. I'm ready. You Something. want me to tell you the title? What? You want to know what it's about? It's about being famous. So, I'm not going to give y'all the details. What? I'm going to give y'all the details. We're going to pray first. Okay. We're going to pray, and then we're going to get into it. Y'all ready? All right, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to see this day that was promised to us. We just come to you right now, dear Heavenly Father, just asking that you would just lead us and guide us as we move into your word, dear Heavenly Father. I ask that you would just please speak to your children, Lord. Help them to get through this sermon, dear Heavenly Father, and just understand what it is that you are trying to teach them. In your son Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, y'all. The scriptures for today are 2 Samuel 11, 26 through 12, 13. And they read, When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. When the period of mourning was over, David sent for her and brought her to the palace, and she became one of his wives. Then she gave birth to a son, but the Lord was displeased with what David had done. So the Lord sent Nathan, the prophet, to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man. But instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. Wow. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he has stole and for having no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. The Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king of Israel and saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wives and the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen from his wife. From this time on, your family will live by the sword because you have despised me by taking Uriah's wife to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Because of what you have done, I will cause your own household to rebel against you. I will give your wives to another man before your very eyes, and he will go to bed with them in public view. You did it secretly, but I will make this happen to you openly in the sight of all Israel. Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Whew. That was serious. <laughs> that was deep. That got serious, y'all. All right, so welcome to Famous, y'all. This is a very good series. I'm so excited about us getting into this for our first Sunday. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about it. So in this series, you'll see one of the Bible's most famous royal families. And in this story, we have the king who wanted someone else's wife for his own. So he sent this poor innocent man out into the field of battle and got him killed, y'all. 
Like, and then he still took his wife. So I'm sorry, that's not funny. It's not. It's 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 serious. It's it serious. really is. Like, it really is. That's that's terrible, honestly. And so I want y'all to. We're gonna dig a little deeper into this discussion so y'all can really see what it is that we're talking about today. So, have you ever wanted to be famous, Kelly? Yes. Yes. Like, so, me and my me and my sister we used to watch Dancing with the Stars. Okay, so you wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars. I wanted to be famous, but I just, I don't know. I didn't want the whole famous life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like wear the nice clothes, mm. nice shoes, nice bags. I could see that. Exactly, that's all. I didn't like want to do that. Like getting dolled up every day. Yeah, that's it. But I didn't want to, you know, the paparazzi, they all in your business. They just, they report the good, but they also report the bad, you know? Who is your favorite celebrity? My favorite celebrity, Beyonce. Beyonce. Okay. I love me some Beyonce. I think I my can favorite. I her day and night. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh God, you're one of those. I think What's my favorite celebrity is Kalani. Kalani? I love her, yeah. I love some her too. Yeah. So I want us to get into a little bit of what the scripture was saying. So here we see, like I said, the king. He made a mistake. And, well, actually, he did something on purpose, but it was a mistake. He shouldn't have been doing it. At the end of the day, the Lord had blessed him with everything he could possibly ask for. He gave him power over his enemies. He delivered his enemy's kingdom to him. He gave him wives. God had literally done everything for him, and he still didn't have enough. He allowed greed to step in the way, and he still went after somebody else's stuff. And so when we really get into this, I want us to take a look at this story and really see what our big idea is for today, for this series. And our big idea is when we make mistakes, we can make things right. So I wanna give y'all a little example, basically, of a celebrity, um, kinda like a skit. So if we were in theater class right now and I was a theater teacher, let me set the stage. So the stage is we're having two celebrities right now, um, or we're having David as his celebrity. And what we are doing is we're going to have a press conference today because the king has done something and he would like some, to say something to the people, right? So. Let's get into it. You ready, Kelly? I think I'm ready. I think I'm going to be the reporter and you be David. Okay. All right. Okay. And action. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I stand before you today to address recent rumors that I play a part in the death of the queen's husband, Uriel and Hitty, the Hittite. Say it again. The Hittite. You Hittite? Mm -hmm. you got this it. is true. I deeply regret my action and would like to sincerely apologize for Ural's family. And also, I ask for forgiveness from my wife, my children, and you, the people. All right. The king will be taking questions now. If you have a question, please raise your hand and come forward. I, I have a question. All right, your majesty, this is the worst scandal this kingdom has ever seen. Why did you do it? I was attracted to now my wife, my wife, Bethine, from that moment I saw her, but she was already married. I made a choice, the wrong one, to send her, her husband into a battle knowing he would be killed. It's been years since this happened. Why are you coming clean now? My advisor, the prophet Nathan, showed me the error of my ways. He told me the story of, of a rich man who had a lot of sheep of his own. But when he had a guest over, he stole the only sheep of the poor man to prepare, to prepare a meal for his guest. That story made me so angry. But Nathine made me, made me see that I was just like the rich man. God gave 
God has given me everything I could ever, ever need or want. Yet I had done this terrible thing. I admit, prayed, I immediately prayed to God and admitted what I had done. Is it true that the queen just gave birth to a baby boy? Yes. We've decided to name him Solomon. I am so thankful that God has for forgiveness and for bringing joy back into our lives. We hope that you will join us in the in the celebration. I hope we hope that you will join us in the celebrating this happy news. Thank you, everyone. That'll be all. Okay. So, scene that was good. So basically, David realized that he made a mistake because of the prophet Nathan. Have you ever looked back on something that you did and realized that it was a mistake? that you wanted to fix it, that you didn't want basically to have the pressure of that on yourself anymore. Sometimes it's not enough for us to apologize, even when we know we've done something wrong. But at the end of the day, God has given us the ability to repent our sins to Him. And He shares with us forgiveness, forgiveness that we don't even deserve but he still shares it with us. You see, David made a very big mistake. And when he tried to cover them up at first, but then Nathan came in and reminded him that this was an issue, that there was a problem. He gave him two separate scenarios. And this helped David to see that what he had done was a large mistake. And so he tried to cover it up, but his hands were dirty and God brought someone into his life to show him and to help him clean himself off. And that is what God does for us every single time. Every single time you think you've done something to where it's too big to come back from, God says, just lean on me. Just bring all of your worries to me. Bring all of your mistakes to me. And he gives us, he grants us this grace and this forgiveness. And I just want you guys to make sure that you remember that. Even when you feel like you've done something that's devastating, nothing is too big or too messy or too bad for God. And you'll see that in this story because although David made a mistake, had a man killed and stole his wife, God still gave him the opportunity to bring life back into this world, to share joy with his wife. And with that, I wanna make sure that whenever we are thinking about things or reading things and you don't feel like you know what to do, you don't know where to turn to, I wanna remind us of our memory verse. And yes, we have a new memory verse. So I know last time we were learning Psalms. This time we are in Corinthians. It's Corinthians 10, 31 and it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. And yes, we do make mistakes. We are human. But at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we're trying to carry out all of our tasks for the glory of God. And with that, that will help us make less mistakes. Because if you're thinking before you make an action and thinking whether it brings glory to God, it helps you to pay attention to the decisions that you make on a day-to-day -day basis. You like that? That's how I'm do that. Did it? You like that? Mm hmm You have anything else you want to share with them today? Um, we should just close off in prayer. All right. I got a prayer for y'all. Dear God, sometimes it's tempting to use a quick apology as a way to avoid facing our mistakes, but you forgive us and help us through what happens after we do something wrong. Help us to follow through with you and others to make things right, even when we don't feel like we know what to do next. You can help us make things right again. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for joining me. I hope you guys have an amazing week next week. Make sure to pay attention to your teachers. Listen to them. They're here to help you. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Have fun. 
I'm glad y'all joined us. We'll see y'all next time. If you're interested in giving with us, don't forget you can give with us on our website, our DC3 app, and our Givelify app. And if you're interested in being a part of our DC3 Children and Youth team, please don't hesitate to email us at students at dc3online.org. Thank you guys, we love you guys, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.